Hello there, and welcome back to the SWTVC podcast, the audio home of the SWTVC crew and the ongoing push for the continued existence, expansion, and success of the heritage scale of Star Wars collecting. I'm Evan, or as you may know me on Instagram, Mile High Ground, and I am joined as always by the real host of the show, the brains, the brawn, and the beauty behind the show, the man himself, <laughs> the vintage concepts, John Lindquist. How are you doing, John? I'm blushing, but I'm doing I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing all right, man. It's been uh it's been a long week. I'm glad that we got the Haslab behind us. We got that episode yes. behind us. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good time be a, to be a Star Wars fan. So. Yes, there will be a few scattered mentions of the Haslab today, but I think we've, you know, after several two hour conversations about it in the span of a week, I think I don't have a whole lot else to say about it right now other than yeah, excited to get it in a year. How much more juice can we squeeze yeah. out of a ghost, you know? <laughs> so this is going to be an episode all about the giant man has lab now. <laughs> Did those... that, that still hasn't backed yet at the time of recording this, if I'm not mistaken. So it it's only like 50% not... funded. Yeah, less than that last time I checked. But um, I'll just say, I'll, I wish you the best. May the force be with the giant man. If, if I was interested in that, I think I'd be all over it. But uh, I have enough collecting problems as is. I just got the Young Jedi Adventures ship in today the the main one the crimson fire oh, nice, or whatever nice. yeah. um man it's bigger than i thought it was so does it fit i saw some earlier photos that it, it might fit some 3.75 inch figures kind of sort of yeah don't tell blue harvest collector but yes yeah. <laughs> uh I, I i was messing around i put a couple of retro figures in it earlier today okay. and uh yeah it, I, don't, I would never display it that way but it was kind of neat it's got a big old cargo space to put the speeders in it's cute oh nice so, yeah products that work together across the whole line are they allowed to do that i don't know man i thought that was a crime but uh yeah. you know it's not a crime huh. dave filoni directing star wars it's so it's a beautiful thing yep uh we're not going to spend too much time talking about ahsoka here at the top since by the time these episodes come out it's the day after a new episode has come out but we record them before so we don't yes. know what's going to happen in episode six I'm just going to say episode five was bonkers and I loved it. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> episode six, probably the same. We don't know. We haven't seen it yet. But if it's anything like the rest of the series, it will be uh, crazy and amazing. So, yeah, looking forward to it. And to my coworkers, please stop sending me links to Star Wars theory videos. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, things we do care about. Yes. Things that we order and things that show up. Mail call. Yes. So, John, what you got? Uh, a lot of the stuff we've kind of talked about a little bit in passing over the past few weeks. Uh, the Remnant speeder bike, I found a couple in Target the other day. Uh, it's also processing from Entertainment Earth. And Pulse, I believe you had already gotten one on the last episode. I still got to open mine. Yeah. I remembered to cancel my Hasbro order. I got the, your item's nice. going to ship soon thing yeah. from Pulse for that. I got so. those and I said, look, I, I guess I'm getting eight remnant speeder bikes. Why not? There's a bunch in the show. Treat so yourself. A lot of characters are going to have bagged Grogu's in my displays now. So yeah. <laughs> um, the Cad Bane wave, the Cad Bane wave, say that five times fast, is arriving from some places and some people are finding it in stores, particularly Walmart, I believe. Um, but you got some from Pulse and Amazon. Is that right? Yes, I did. The Amazon ones came in a couple weeks ago, and the Pulse ones just came in a couple days ago. Uh, Amazon, weirdly, they shipped each one in its own box. Uh, a couple of them showed up mm. kind of meh, but overall, they turned out okay. So okay, in fact, that my Cad Bane and I think one of my Jajareds um, are the ones that I'm keeping as my carded samples, because wow. uh, Pulse weirdly dropped the ball for me. Usually, they're good about putting things in appropriate sized boxes. Uh, yeah. There was eight figures in there because I ordered a whole case. Um, they don't put it in the case, of course, but they wrapped them up in that weird like paper grid stuff, which I really like for packaging. Yeah. Um, but the box was like almost the exact dimensions of a card. So everything was kind of bent in there. Oh, gosh. Uh, and a couple things had some impact veining, um, but not the worst. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, CAD, great figure. If you want me to jump into those, sorry. Yeah, do it. 
I, yeah, I don't Cad- have it. I don't have it. I'll just say I don't have any of them. So you you take the lead on this one. I'll keep it, I'll keep it brief. I know we've talked about them on the show before when Lewis got them back when we were but small boys and Eisenhower was in office. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, Cad Bane is a really fantastic figure. I have not spent as much time as I'd like uh, posing it a whole lot, but. Um, it's a great figure. I just want to say I do have a couple minor gripes with it, and it's that the um, neck doesn't have a whole lot of mobility, so you can't have him looking down like mysteriously under the brim of his uh, hat. You have to angle the hat to get that. You can't angle his head. Hmm. Um, and then the knees are because he's very skinny and long knees, uh, long legs. He's got kind of knock knees going on. Um, but that's I nothing. A little pain. posing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you tall boys and your long ass legs. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one of my Jajareds had the white bubble scuff real bad on it. Um, it was the only one that did. Everything else seemed OK. Hmm. Uh, but they all kind of looked a little cross eyed to me. Uh, the first one. So I waited. And then the other two I got in was like, oh, yeah, no, they all look the same. So maybe I'm Weird. the cross eyed one. We'll find out. <laughs> maybe he's been looking um, at the Death Star 2 plans a little too closely. And maybe he was just reading his own name pill. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how many letters are capitalized? What? How do I, yeah. What's my name? How do I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> color corrected Boba is nice. It's the same figure you got if you got the Slave One repaint. Um, which yes, I got earlier this year. I said I wasn't going to, but I got it for I think like half price. Sorry to Clarence Vulture on that, but that was one. That's a product I didn't believe in, and didn't think needed to happen the way it did. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, not going to advocate for Clarence Vulturing, but. Whatever. Uh, I do like this one with the proper black cloak. Uh, looks nice. The deco is great. Uh, Nine Numb uh, is the same as he has been for 11 years, just with a couple little minor details different. But I didn't have an opener of the original figure anyway, so nothing to complain about for me. I'm glad I had a chance to add him to my open collection. So Nice. And uh, yes, as we said before, he is still several feet too short, but thank God they at least corrected the color of his ankle pins this time. Yeah. It, it's something. You know what? He does everything I need him to do. He stands yeah. in the background and he can sit in a cockpit. I'll get him a little miniature apple box to stand on to be the correct height, I guess, if I need to. Yeah. So, and then, so is EE processing these? Uh, or? No, uh, for me, no, they're not even processing. It still says October. So, in a couple of weeks, I guess. But, okay. um, however, they are processing a couple other things, including the Mandalorians in one Starfighter. Which, uh, yeah, it jumped to in stock on there, but mine has not shipped yet. I moved my order over to Entertainment Earth in hopes that it would ship sooner. And uh, it hasn't quite done that yet, but, you know, one day. Yeah, I did the same. I caved. I was like, I don't need to spend that money right now. Yeah. Whoops. But here we are. <laughs> um, and then Boba Fett's throne room also is uh, in stock and processing from Hasbro Pulse. Yeah. Uh, yours hasn't shipped? Has not shipped. Yours hasn't shipped either. It has not, but it's got to be soon because I did literally just like an hour, two hours ago, got an email that some oh. G.I. Joe, the trouble bubble things that I ordered for yeah. a friend, those actually just shipped. And I got the processing and the payment emails just a little before I got all the throne room things. So hopefully it should be in the next couple of days that those start moving. Yeah, when you get those emails from Pulse, it's never, it's, it might be a day, it might be a week before they actually ship after processing, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I saw from a friend that was at Disneyland this past weekend, uh, the Sabine Wren deluxe figure is showing up there. I think it's twenty nine ninety nine there, so even more expensive than it should be, but uh, that's the way it goes. And so, as always, I am resisting the urge to drive to Anaheim right this minute and go to Disneyland. I I, I don't know how you have that restraint. I, I would <laughs> be there so much, even if I had to drive like an hour every time. I'm so I was weak. when I had the annual pass, but yeah, now, sadly, that's not to be anymore, but yeah. yeah. I've got a buddy from uh, Utah going to the parks this weekend, and he uh, he said he'd be on the lookout for those things. So, but just in case, I do also have. Uh, I ordered her from. I ordered Sabine from GameStop actually um, a while ago, and I just noticed that her release date shifted to the twenty second, which is this Friday, I believe. Um, and I got an email that said your item will ship soon for her. So interesting. We'll see. GameStop's a gamble. I know. I remember in 2021, I got Bo-Katan real early from them. Hmm. Uh, but then there's times where they don't get something until like five months after it's already been released. So it's, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And then, uh, speaking kind of of Disneyland, as you said, the, um, they're adding some galaxy's edge stuff to the shop Disney website and you got the, uh, Something you've been looking for for a while? 
Yeah, yeah. They just put up that Disney droid pack from 2020. It's a five pack, right? I don't know. There's a gonk yeah. droid in there. And it's a. The, it's, uh, let me look. It's in my Galaxy's Edge display. There's like an R1 droid. There's a gonk droid. There's a couple of Astromex. And there's a. What's it's that? The same yellow? style as. His name in Force Awakens is Buford. Okay. I forget the exact name of this guy, but they're the five that are sitting outside the actual Droid Depot shop at Galaxy's Edge in the parks. So it's nice that they're, you know, merchandising everything they can. Disney Parks knows how to do it. When you corrected me earlier today, because I was like, are they from Solo? Because I remember they also had a yeah. Solo pack as well, right? For, yeah, they would do four Galaxy's packs Edge. of a lot of the different shows. And I think yeah, the last which... one was the Obi Wan pack from last year. Just when you said, no, no, it's from the parks. And I was like, oh, I've only ever been there the once. So I don't know. But then oh. literally just as you were saying, it's the five that are standing out there. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. No, I remember those now that thank you for jogging yeah, my yeah. memory because yes, I could yes. not picture them. So I saw them. The first thought was those guys are cool. And the second thought is I need figures of them. And they delivered on that. So thank you, Disney yeah. Parks. Yeah, at least something happens. Yeah. So <laughs> speaking of things happening, PulseCon <laughs> is this week. <laughs> yes, it is uh, only one day this year, Friday, September 22nd. And with uh, seven brands being represented, at least mentioned on their website, it's hard to know how much to expect from each brand, how much how much to expect from Star Wars this year. Um, so if you want to learn how to manage your PulseCon expectations, listen to our episode from last year about that exact topic. I feel like we've done one for last year and the year before, but we repeat ourselves a lot. We say the yeah. same things. It's almost <laughs> like nothing ever changes. Uh, <laughs> but one thing for PulseCon is uh, fan site StarWarsCollector.com has gotten word that uh, ordering details for the HasLab adjacent uh, Rebels, Sabine and Chopper on their mule cards will be revealed at PulseCon. So will we see the figures then too? I don't know, but I wasn't that sure. Might yeah, be I wasn't nice. sure if they meant... They're actually going up this week, or if they meant we're going to tell you when they're going to go up, we're just going to give you more information this week. That's sort of the vibe I got from it. Again, keeping uh, yeah. my expectations nice and real low. Yeah, I don't expect to see them. I don't think it's going to be for pre-order. I, I imagine that's something that's going to maybe come out to wet our wet our whistles before our ghosts arrive later next year. Yeah, um, But I could easily see them being like, oh, yeah, no, 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 either something like, oh, if you back to the ghost, you get an early chance or whatever. I don't. That yeah, sounds too complicated. They, yeah. It's probably just going to be like, if you want it, get it whenever. Yeah. So here's when you can expect it next summer at the end. Yeah. So <laughs> I would not be surprised. Um, but there is another long lost event coming up next week, which is New York Toy Fair. Uh, the first one since 2020. And it was always in the dead of winter in the middle of February. Uh, and the first time uh, that it's back after the pandemic. Uh, and the first time that it's in September now is shifted to later in the year. Um, and Hasbro is giving out media tours on Friday, September 29th. We are not going to that, but uh, I assume our friends and colleagues will be going to that. I, you know, So keep your peepers popped for that news coming out of that event. So who knows how much stuff we're going to get out of this because it's kind of a lot all at once. Yeah, yeah. But uh, before those reveals at PulseCon, or sorry, before the reveals at Toy Fair, uh, PulseCon, maybe whatever, uh, we did get another reveal this week, finally, and it was... The Obi Wan Kenobi Showdown Two Pack. Thank God you've been. Have you been counting the hours since it was pipelined all those months ago? No, that would be ridiculous. But yeah, it was <laughs> roughly five thousand four hundred and two hours, which was two hundred twenty five days. It was pipelined on February first, twenty twenty three, uh, during an eleven a.m. Eastern Time live stream. So, <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So finally so, got to see it. It's uh, kind of what we expected, but it's nice to see that it wasn't just a, a repack of the existing Obi Wan. But um, if I can run down the figures a little bit, if that's all right, I know yeah. you have a lot to say about Obi Wan. But uh, for Darth Vader, yeah, 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 as you always do. God bless you. Yeah. But uh, Darth Vader <laughs> showdown. Um, the Black Series one was called uh, Rear End or something. Oh no, Duels End. Yeah, Rear End. Um, and so, uh, as we all kind of assumed, it's the magnificent uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi series Dark Times, Darth Vader again from last year, but with a new cracked removable helmet, a new Hayden Christensen portrait, confirming yet again that the previous one was indeed Sebastian Shaw, uh, a battle damaged chest box, shoulder armor that now kind of moves separately from the main chest armor piece, which is a nice little upgrade. They didn't have to do that. Um, and a newly tattered cape from the end of the duel. So, yeah, a nice little upgrade on an already great figure, more scene-specific. Remains to be seen if he's got the slash on the cape, right? Yeah, I on the back. There's been an, yeah. No, the, yeah. The photos were very questionable, but uh, we did not see his back on this time. Yeah, those photos, man. I, ooh, 
anyway, <laughs> enough said about that. Um, I noticed there was some uh, chatter about Darth Vader's helmet being a little oversized and uh, removable helmets, everybody. That's what they do. Um, but I'll, that's one that I think personally I'm okay with the removable helmet in this case. Well, uh, I think, yeah. I think it looks all right. And of course it is part of the play feature and of the action, like seeing the portrait underneath and whatever. I, it didn't look too bad to me. It doesn't look like Sabine's helmet. I'll just say that much. No. And Vader's helmet is, you know, oversized. It's bigger than his actual head. So, you know, yeah. and then I thought the the removable helmet on the return of the Jedi one, the death star two one is yeah. uh, really well executed. And this one looks to be as well. Um, I don't yeah. know if it needed to be removable, but it's nice to be able to see the the portrait under there. Yeah, the, the Black Series version of this doesn't have a removable helmet, correct? It's just the crack peek through? As far as I know, that's correct, yeah. Okay, cool. But cool. It, yeah, not to get too far down the Black Series rabbit hole, it went up at Target and before I was even awake. And so who knows <laughs> when it'll show up in store and then go in clearance five seconds later, probably as Target is wont to do. But <laughs> yeah, I'll pick that up for six forty nine or whatever I end up yeah. finding it for, probably. <laughs> so the other figure in this two pack, obviously, is. Obi-Wan Kenobi showdown. Uh, you want to run down some of this stuff? Run down the showdown figure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is his more classic Jedi robes look from the second half of the season. Um, it reuses the legs from the wandering Jedi figure, uh, which we also saw in the Tibidon Station figure, as well as the recent Tusken Raiders pack. It was kind of used to give them some modern articulation. So I'm sure Hasbro was stoked they could simply reuse the Wandering Jedi legs, which I'm also sure was probably a key factor in this figure being viable within their budget. Uh, yeah, I know the proportions on the legs are a bit wonky with the low knee and the short lower leg, but pick your battles and all that. And I pick this showdown pack as my <laughs> battle. Um, and as far as I can tell, it maybe reuses the upper arms from the wandering Jedi figure. Like they, they look pretty similar uh, in a couple side by side comparisons that I was looking at today. Uh, but then again, I've been wrong on a couple uh, small details today. Uh, just it's what I do. Uh, and I also <laughs> did just schedule an appointment to get new glasses for the first time in a few years. So we'll see, but otherwise I think it's completely new, including Something I was anxious about and did not actually expect them to do, but I'm so thrilled they did. A new head sculpt. Yes, and it looks great. He's got the hair kind of more, a little more stylish than it was in his uh, Wandering Jedi Pajamas edition. Yeah, yeah, and more of a defined beard and mouth instead of just like a weird brown chin sticking yeah. out. <laughs> Um, I'm looking at his upper arms now. It does; they do look similar, but you know, it's fine. There's there's two spots in particular. There's a couple lines that run down on the right arm, mm -hmm. and then there's a big deep fold on the left yeah. arm that looked pretty much the same. Um, and then the articulation is still deep on that, so I think it's just new forearms on that. Yeah, but which is smart. But yeah, yeah, it had I figure had great articulation. So yeah, and so now. Uh, yeah. When, I know, when it was announced, you decided to list every single Jedi character ever, and you'll be comparing their tunic right now on the show. Yes, yes. All, however, what, 20,000 Jedi are out yep. there? Let's do it. Uh, you guys <laughs> buckle up. I actually won't do that, but I, it, I just want to mention, like I want to talk about it just briefly, because it's nice to see a, a newly tooled prequel style Jedi figure. It's been some time. So there are a lot of questions about what could be used or added to this figure. Um, I'm hoping to do some visual posts uh, on some kind of little deep dive at some point in the future. Not right now. I'm very tired. Again, a HasLab campaign just happened uh, and we've got other stuff that we want to do first. Um, I just don't want expectations to kind of run away for like unlimited Jedi based on this figure, uh, which is not to say that they can't make plenty with it. So mm -hmm. um, one thing to kind of keep in mind is that while Jedi all seem to have pretty similar costume across like, or costume designs across the board uh, in the prequel era, there are some noticeable differences that need to be considered when expecting accuracy in the vintage collection. And I know we've talked about that a lot. Um, accuracy, playability, as we're trying to cost things out. Uh, but one of these things is the way that like the, the tabards, their little uh, fabric pieces that, come down across their shoulders. Um, some Jedi have theirs meet in the middle. Others have them set a little wider apart. Others still have them that uh, meet in the back or come around their neck to be one singular strip of fabric. Uh, Obi-Wan in A New Hope is an example of this. Uh, some tabards also hang down in the front and back uh, on the skirt area like Anakin in, in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. 
Uh, and then some only have them hanging down in the front, like Obi-Wan and the prequels. Uh, the skirt and tabard length also vary from Jedi to Jedi. Some have mid-thigh, some have thigh, some have knee, shin, ankle length, all that fun stuff. Uh, and some don't even have a tabard at all. Um, and then some Jedi also have more different undershirt styles instead of the V-shaped gi kind of present. Some will have like a like a turtleneck looking thing or like a hooded shirt coming up from underneath. Um, and then the belts aren't 100% the same across the board for Jedi either. There's different pouches uh, and how they're placed, different buckles, different saber clip placement, stuff like that. Um, sorry, John, am I boring you? No, I was just uh, trying to say how... Um... This is, you know, if, if people are excited about the rank badges, I'm sure this, this is the this new is rank, my rank badge. badge. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm not going to get super deep into it, but there are a couple things that they could definitely do with this Obi-Wan, like, uh, torso and arms uh with minimal new tooling they could do my number one most wanted figure uh the mythos jedi legend dune c final c whatever you want to call them from the final scene of obi-wan kenobi uh they could reuse the head the torso the arms they would just have to do new legs um uh, you know the lower legs uh his boots are a little more in line with the revenge of the sith boots kind of with a shin kind of guard and some straps uh skirt without the holster new hands and then a new soft goods sleeveless robe. And then of course, accessories like goggles and the T-16 model. They could also use this uh, torso and arms to do new Obi-Wan updates from the prequel films. I wanted to ask about the Obi-Wan stuff because this one, it's a little, in the Obi-Wan show, it's a little looser. All the tabards are a little bit, he's letting it out a little bit. I don't know, you know, maybe yeah. they, they didn't have but it I've, in his size or something. But I think I've maybe noticed that uh in the disney era that all like and we even saw it in um anakin's costume in the most recent episode of ahsoka um i think what was it was it trish trisha beggar trisha from the beggar, prequels? yeah 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 she really knew how to make these costumes sit and like flow mm -hmm. um that, that's just kind of something that is i've kind of been a little nitpicky about um in the disney era that these jedi style costumes when we've seen them do kind of bunch up a little more than we ever uh, saw in the prequel films um yeah i think the figure itself doesn't read super baggy as it does in the media itself uh and, and so i wouldn't right. mind if they reused it for some like a revenge of the sith obi-wan is something i would really love to see a meaningful update to for sure i think but it yeah, worked for yeah. that yeah yeah so they could also do Luke's other training outfit from the book of Boba Fett. You had mentioned that to me earlier, John. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be what the torso and the arms. Um, yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. They could do some more generic Jedi like Sora Bulk and uh, Syndralic would also be one that they could definitely do with this. Mm -hmm. um, and then they could do, I guess, Qui-Gon and Mace, I suppose. A little but taller, again, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then Keller and Beck was brought up when we talked about this at one point. Uh, though I'm not quite sure that I agree with it due to the exaggerated kind of like uh, edges of his shirt, with a uh, tunic shirt with the inscriptions and the way that his shirts kind of sit a little more overlapped and uh, pronounced than this Obi-Wan uh, shows. So what they hmm. could not do is like Plo Koon, uh, Kit Fisto, and then is it Agen or Agen Kolar? I was said Agen, Agen, but I don't know. I've always said Agen in my head and it sounds dumb. So Eth um, Koth instead. Eth Koth. So. There we go. Basically the same. They've all got <laughs> yeah. those kind of turtlenecky shirts that I mentioned. Um, they did, uh, they reused Obi-Wan and Mace bodies in the Black Series for Plo and Kit. Uh, and so those figures are kind of inaccurate and look a little yeah. wonky. I don't want them to do that again here. No, I don't want that. They couldn't do Kiati Mundi. He's got a pretty unique costume altogether. Uh, and they couldn't do Sacy Teen because he has a really flat, low rise undershirt. You got to show off those collarbones, dude. Um, <laughs> and what they probably should not do is they should not use this for Anakin, maybe the left arm and the right upper arm, but that's it. Uh, Anakin would preferably need to be all new. Um, he's got a different texture to his costume. He's got those kind of leather tabards coming over and they're a little more pronounced. Um, and besides he's the main character, he's the chosen one. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's invest in that character. Yes. So choose to give him all new tool. Yeah. So too long. Didn't listen. Uh, I just think they need to maybe tool up at least one to two more versions of generic prequel Jedi sculpts, uh, different pieces, legs, arms, uh, different torsos. They can mix and match them till, the cows come home uh we could have many things but for now this is a great first step into the larger world uh it's not as completely door opening as it may look on the surface uh we've banged the drum for accuracy so you know why settle for less now uh, anyways as i said we'll do more 
thoughtful digs into this in the future, but I just wanted to kind of curb any runaway excitement and expectations here, which I had myself for a while, but overall incredibly pleased about this Obi-Wan. Yes. Super happy. Would you, I know the answer already, but would you want to see this figure again repacked with his unique robe without the sleeves that he wears in this outfit? Yeah. Is it just a generic Jubim version? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, or um, with a or with a hat and a big old big yeah. old coat, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we got to get a Leia into the line. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm down for any Obi Wan. Really, I uh, yeah, this is just based on the poor pictures, but just what they've done for this figure, it is lived up to my expectations pretty much, and I'm over the moon to get it in hand. I cannot wait, so I only have to wait That's until good. what December now to get it. But whatever. yeah. Yeah. Which means it'll charge next week now. Um, the other yeah, thing yeah. I forgot to mention in the outline, but uh, the price, I know a lot of people were taking issue with it because on Pulse, it's thirty nine ninety nine for this two pack. I guess on Entertainment Earth, I think it's thirty six ninety nine. I didn't verify that, but that's what people were saying. Yeah. Um, which is in line with the, the Ewok two pack that went up a few months ago, which everybody already forgot about. The Wicked and Nisa animated uh, Ewoks cartoon two pack. It was thirty eight ninety nine, and yes, it has coins, but you know they're not five dollar coins. And um, those are I, old figures it, too. Yeah, and yeah, and they're old and they're small, and there's really nothing. There's no new tooling in that set at all. This set has a lot of new tooling. Yeah, so I, I don't. It's it sucks. I mean, it's a little bit more than it, it, it's nineteen ninety nine per figure instead of sixteen ninety nine. It's I, you know I can live with it. And exclusives are always a little bit more. You know, if you if you can't justify it, more power to you. But yeah, it's, you know, I, I wish they would have included his robe in that for the price. Yeah. Uh, and then I know how absurd this is going to sound, but I would have liked some plastic rocks for him well, to throw around. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, they could do something like that with these sets where it's like the carded figures, but then there's still space in the box. They can have another one of those plastic, one of those uh, little uh, wax paper baggies. Yeah, yeah with some rocks little or, accessories. Yeah. Yeah. Some little world building accessories. Yeah. Things that wouldn't work on the carded figure. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of rocks. I can. I got rocks in the backyard. You know. But still. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I can just go outside. <laughs> but I collect toys, and I don't like going outside. So here we are. Yes, I'm an indoor kind of guy. Yep. But uh, yes, uh, if you can believe it, getting into the nut meat of the show here today. It's been six months since the end of the 2023 SWTBC March Madness tournament. So we're gonna do a little check in, looking at all three years of the tournament thus far uh yeah sorry to curb your uh obi-wan robe situation but we got a lot to talk about here no no good i, I hope i didn't take up too much time with that i tried to blow no, no. through it because i knew it was super tedious and <laughs> audio medium does not do well for the little nitty-gritty things but, but uh, uh, here's yeah. some nitty-gritty stuff we'll get into if you want to go over the rules yet again here in this recap okay so as you hopefully know by now Every January at SWTVC, we ask you to submit your top 25 most wanted all new vintage collection figures. Uh, we want to focus on new tooling, but, you know, we admit that we are way deeper in the weeds on that subject than anyone really should be. So we can't fault people for putting figures on that list that could just use some existing parts. Um, we then take those ranked lists and figure out the top most wanted figures. And we've released the lists of the top 100 figures for each year. Uh, but we take the top 64 and pit them against each other in an elimination style bracket to get the conversations going and see where the general collector's priorities are. So today, for the purposes of the conversation, we're focusing on the 64 figures that were on the bracket each year. So across all three years, how many unique characters have appeared on the bracket? That's a great question, Evan. Thank you for asking. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 98 unique characters have appeared on the bracket. Okay. Um, you know, 64 each year, but there are a lot of repeat customers. Um, so of those 98 unique characters, 56 have been made in the vintage collection, which I think is actually That's quite not good. bad. It's quite good in my opinion. So uh, yeah, that means, uh, gee, 42 characters remain unmade. From 2021, 36 from the bracket have been made. From 2022, 26 from the bracket have been made. And from 2023, already 19 from the bracket have been made. And again, there's lots of overlap in there, and we'll be getting into that. Um, but it's nice to see that, uh, you know, Hasbro's priorities and collector's priorities are lining up in this in this way. And the ghost put a bit of a dent in that, in that number, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we'll come on to that um, 
in a bit because I kind of want to walk through, you know, the characters that appeared once in the bracket and why they only appeared once, characters that appeared twice, and then characters that appeared thrice. We're going to build up to the heavy hitters today, so stay tuned, folks. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on mostly on the unmade figures. For the most part, we'll, we will have a post at some point detailing the figures that have been made, so be sure to check that out on uh, our joint Instagram at SWTVC, of course. So yeah, I have some reasonings for why they might have appeared only once or twice, if you want to read those out as well. Okay. So yes, if they appeared only once or twice, it could mean that they were from new media that didn't exist when one or two of the previous brackets was happening. Or it could mean they moved up in the rankings. Maybe they became relevant again in new media or due to an anniversary. Or maybe other related figures were made and they became relevant to the collection again. Uh, Or it could mean they were moved down in the rankings. Uh, Maybe other figures became a priority. Uh, Or maybe they've moved further from our memories. Or it could mean the best case scenario, they were made in TVC. It's the hope for all of them and all other characters in general. So collections are built on hope. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the characters who only appeared once. So 38 characters fit that bill. 18 of those characters have been made. 15 after their appearance on the 2021 bracket. Two after their appearance on last year's bracket. And one after only appearing this year, which was Tyler's favorite, Django Fett, um, who of course okay. uses a lot of uh, reuse tooling. Um, so 20 of those one-timer characters have not been made. Are you with me here, everybody? Breaking it down to the ones that only appeared on the... Do you want to start with 2021 or 2023? Let's uh, let's go from oldest to newest. Okay. So Gone But Not Forgotten, the unmade class of 2021, uh, <laughs> but actually also probably forgotten. Um, there were two prequel Jedi, continuing with the theme, uh, which were Plo Koon and Shock T. They kind of fell off a little bit as other characters shifted around. Maybe they'll get a boost again with the anniversaries over the next few years. Who knows? And then four figures from media that was a little bit more recent at the time in 2021, uh, which are Poe Dameron from The Rise of Skywalker, Gar Saxon from Season 7 of The Clone Wars, Maul Crimson Dawn from Solo, and the Mud Trooper, who was mostly released as the Morak Tank Trooper. So I think that kind of scratches the itch for a lot of people for now, though it would still be awesome to see that in the vintage collection because it, so much of it exists already. Um, yes. So the unmade class of 2022, those two figures were Max Rebo, who had a boost from his book of Boba Fett appearance. And I could not remember that he did not appear this year for, uh, the return of the Jedi anniversary. That's all right. And, uh, Omega, uh, because maybe it became a little more clear that it was going to take quite a while to get the bad batch unclear. Um, they were still, relatively highly ranked but they kind of slipped just under the bracket this year this kind of ties into what we talked about last episode of striking while the iron is hot yes uh and the bad batch kind of ship has we're what staring down the barrel of a final final season and we've got one season one figure yes so hopefully uh yeah yeah, i don't know i don't know i don't know one day that's something we'll also be talking about i think next week correct balance the scales stuff um yeah so bad batch will be something we look at there and i can already tell how sad i'm going to be making that graphic (laughs) and they'll be coming up uh, in a little bit as well as you might imagine the rest of the characters but um so there were 12 figures this year unmade that only appeared on this year's bracket uh, including four characters who were given the spotlight in Andor, including new characters Luthen Rail and Dedra Miro, and returning favorites Mon Mothma in her Coruscant appearance, and Two Tubes, who first appeared in Rogue One. Um, two characters who were given the spotlight in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, the fifth brother Inquisitor and Princess Leia Organa, her young version. Not a single figure exists of young Leia. Anywhere, yeah. Um, There's I a know- Funko Pop, that's it. And I get that that was supposed to be a surprise, and yeah, I appreciate that, but... It's been 18 months, At this dudes. point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, one character from The Mandalorian who has since become a mainstay of that series, which is Peli Mato, of course. Maybe now that we have the in one, she's become a little more of a priority. And uh, five legacy characters who jumped up in the rankings this year, including Garin Dan, a.k.a. Long Snoot, who Tim from Bosk's Bounty has been championing. Uh, the AT-AT driver, I don't know why he suddenly got a boost. Uh, Princess Leia Organa uh, her, in her Ewok Village dress, who was recently released in Black Series, coincided with the uh, 40th of Return of the Jedi. Um, and then Kiadi Mundi, who is coming to Black Series next year as part of the uh, Phantom Menace 25th anniversary celebration. 
And uh, C-3PO, who was typically forgotten in the earlier brackets, did not even crack the top 100, I don't think. Let me double check that. Uh, correct. Um, <laughs> I think maybe people just got tired of the uh, early vintage collection one being repainted all the time. But um, he has kind of you know, joined the other A New Hope uh, main character as part of the big rallying cry for the community, at least uh, certain segments of the community. Um, so yeah, so those are the, those are the one timers. Okay. Respectable. Will we ever see some of these characters again? Yes. R- real quick, if I may just, yes, yes, I just want to throw may, this in now that think of how many characters exist Yes, just out there and how many figures there could be, how many things that haven't been made as figures. And you said there was 98 unique figures that hit the brackets yep. across the years. Mm-hmm. So that's a pretty exclusive club to hit that. So that's impressive. Any character that makes the bracket, that is a testament to the desire for that character, for the popularity for that character. Yeah. So it's, it's a badge of honor to appear at all, obviously. And it's just, you know, hoping that uh, they can strike while the iron is hot before things are forgotten or uh, yeah, we'll see if some of these characters appear next year as well. Um, so for the two timers, that sounds not nice. They're, they're all nice, respectable people. The characters yeah. that appeared twice. Um, there are 26 that fit that bill. 10 of them have been made, including uh, six after 2022 and four after 2023. Um, some of them are a little bit dicey, uh, including Cal Kestis and Cad Bane, because they appear in the brackets in their earlier media sources, uh, but they're made from their newer media sources. So their prior looks did still get votes, but they moved further down the, the list. So um, 16 of the characters who appeared twice have not been made. Um, some were uh, not in the bracket in 2021, but were on both 2022 and 2023. Some got the Return of the Jedi 40th bump, including Amana Man, Fozek, and Shasatil. Uh, a couple of other original trilogy characters, including uh, Han Solo from New Hope and Snowtrooper. Uh, the first year was a little less focused on the original trilogy. I don't know if because we were more focused on getting Instagram lists for the most part, but I think we were also still in the sort of the finish the 96 zone. Everybody thought. They were more likely. Um, yeah, people might have thought they were more guaranteed than they actually were because they were still, you know, working their way through a lot of uh, like early or uh, relatively easy partial tools and things like that. Uh, there were also some Mandalorian characters that moved up in the rankings, perhaps as other more prominent Mando characters were made. There was a lot of Mandalorian representation on the first bracket, and most of the heavy hitters have been made. Um, but some of the ones that appeared were the client Q90 Frog Lady. And Migs Mayfeld Prison Break, who could kind of fall into the same bucket as Cad and Cal because uh, his season two look was made, but not his season one look. Um, so, you know, whatever. Work it out how you want to. All, all of those Mando figures tie into world building items that we have in the line, yep. like the Navarro Cantina and the Razor Crest. Absolutely. Yep. So that's probably, yeah, that makes sense. We yeah, want those. Like, we want to complete those. Yeah. And like Zero and Migs, I know that's another whole crew to get going on, but um, Black Series has those too. And I think if you're going to do any of the prison break characters, those, those are the two to do. One character from Solo returned to the list, I guess, after she appeared in the comics. I got to double check the timing of that, but that's Kira, of course. And then back to what we were talking about a minute ago, lots of Bad Batch characters. So... Of course, yes, they had appeared in Clone Wars Season 7 in 2020, and they had been in the Unfinished Story Reel many years before that, but their show premiered in May 2021 after the first tournament, which gave them a a big boost. And those four here in this category are Wrecker, Crosshair, Echo, and Tech. Um, And of course, Hunter was also on the bracket in 2022, but was announced by the time the 23 one came around and remains the only Bad Batcher in the Vintage Collection. Ouch. But again, at least we got Hauser and Ballas, thank God. Um, and so two characters appeared in the first two years, but slipped a little bit. Um, and those are Grief Karga, season one, who goes with the Navarro Cantina, slipped to number 67 this year, just missing the bracket. And Han Solo from The Force Awakens, who slipped to number 79 this year. So yes, nothing too surprising, I guess. But, Mm -hmm. uh, shall we move on to the heavy hitters, the characters who appeared thrice? Let's do it. The triple, the triple crown. I don't know. The the, the hat trick. Thrice. the triplets, the hat trick. Yeah, is there, there you go. Is there a, a turkey something? Turkey, yeah. Uh, in bowling terms. Um, so there are 34 characters that appeared all three years, and 14 of them have been announced since this year's bracket, which is pretty damn good, um, including, so I'm talking about characters that have been made now, 
or announce anyway. This year's number one uh, seeded figure, Princess Leia. Last year's number one, and this year's tournament champion, Count Dooku. Uh, Pre Vizsla, who nearly had a shocking upset last year against Chris Anton. Uh, two Return of the Jedi classics, Tessic and Velkin Tazeri, who are now starting to hit. Uh, villains like Director Krennic and the Grand Inquisitor. And of course, thanks to the Ghost Haslab, the entire Rebels crew who had been on all three years and are now finally knocked out. That's awesome. Uh, that that list, that feel that feels good to hear. That gives me happy yeah. beeps. It's like, wow, yeah, dude, those are heavy hitters. Yes. Not to, you know, pat ourselves on the back or to do hashtag you're welcome, but it is nice to see that the most requested community figures that are like so far and above other ones are are now being knocked out. And uh, we can move on to other requests, including the 20 that have not been made, who have appeared three times, uh, including four from A New Hope, two that fall under the sort of make the mains idea, uh, which we know they are now starting with Leia, but are not going to do all at once. So have a little patience, everybody. Uh, those are Luke Skywalker, Tatooine, and Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and of course, uh, two Cantina, I guess three Cantina characters, the Tonica Sisters and Moma Nadon Hammerhead, who was just announced for the Black Series, which will obviously use the Doc Ondar tooling. And as we've said, if they do one in Vintage, they can do the other. So let's get, them, let's get going here. And uh, yeah, all of those, except for the Tonicas, of course, are also finished the 96 characters. And so are these guys, these two from Return of the Jedi, which are EV-99. And my boy, sweet, sweet Similu, uh, they just missed the anniversary, maybe in time for Return of the Jedi 50. Someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, uh, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, and sorry, I don't mean to slam no, the brakes on it, this, but like, I wonder, so the, 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 a new hope 50th is also for all intents and purposes, the star Wars 50th anniversary. Yeah. So I wonder if it's going to be, of course, focus on a new hope, but will there be a more broader, like celebration of the ot and kind of i don't know celebrate the saga if you will not with 5 right. poa god bless but uh <laughs> <laughs> it's been interesting yeah because uh for the 25th anniversary of a new hope well obviously for the 20th let's talk about all the anniversaries of a new hope real quick just to pad it out a little bit there we go so they, they brought that back the special edition of all three original trilogy movies for the 25th uh, the only Hasbro offerings really were those three packs of Luke and Leia, uh, Obi-Wan and Vader, and Han and Chewie. I remember getting those at Target. Yeah. And so the 30th anniversary collection, that focused on the entire saga. As you said, it celebrated the entire saga. That was one of the best uh, figure lines, for, in my opinion, for my money. Yeah. Um, then for the 40th, they had, yeah, nothing for vintage because it wasn't around at the time, but they had the uh, Titanium, Titanium series figures and they had the whole... Um, so started the six inch figures on retro vintage Kinder card backs as well for each of the subsequent 40th anniversary. They've done more of that. You know, vintage had a good stab at the Return of the Jedi 40th overall. We always want more, but it was a lot better than the A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back 40th. But yeah, so leading up to the 50th, hopefully they can do maybe, you know, Leia in 2024, Han in 2025, Luke in 2026, Obi-Wan in 27 or whatever. Yeah. Whatever order you want to do it in. Yeah, one a year seems to work out. Yeah. Frustrating as it may be, because I'm sure some folks, by the time that 50th anniversary rolls around, they're going to be 70, and they're going to be yes. like, I hate my life. So I already feel like I'm 70 every time I do uh, March Madness. It adds 20 years to my life. But um, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> maybe we'll get the Tonicas and Momane done by then as well. But anyway, another A New Hope adjacent movie that's not quite 50 years old is Rogue One and Three Figures have appeared three times from Rogue One, three unmade figures, which are, of course, Baze Malbus and Bodhi Rook to fit to uh, finish the crew, and Saw Gerrera, who got a big boost this year after appearing in Andor. He had previously been around the 50s and uh, was much, much higher this year. You know what I realize is I don't have the five POA uh, Saw Gerrera open. Oh, really? I only have one sealed box of that set. I should probably get that at some point. Yeah, it's. A, I still think it's a good figure, but I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out yes. hope that we'll get a real proper one. But save the collection, save the dream. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, another Star Wars story character is uh, Dryden Voss from Solo. That's for you, Lewis. But he's always on my list as well. Um, still can't believe they have not made the main villain from Solo in uh, three point seven five at all. They haven't made the main villain from a few movies. So. Yes, they haven't made the main villain from Jedi Fallen Order. Trilicidary second sister Inquisitor Carlo's favorite who has, again, appeared all three years on the bracket. Uh, four characters from The Clone Wars, who are Asajj Ventress, Pong Krell, Savage Opress, and Jedi Temple Guard. Maybe now that Dooku's finally coming to the line, Ventress can join. And like we said, I noticed that 
Morgan Elsbeth's kind of uh, Night Sister y arms could be used for Ventress's lower arms. Maybe her legs are similar to, I don't know. And Ventress was uh, the finalist yep. behind, yep. she came in second place after Dooku in March Madness this year. It was a duel of master and apprentice this year. And then, as we said before, the Jedi Temple Guard is kind of rebels adjacent. So maybe now that they're kind of opening that door, uh, maybe that's another possibility. I don't know. Pop a Grand Inquisitor head on it and be like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, so uh, one character from The Mandalorian who has appeared all three years. You who know could it be? Him. Who could it be? It's Cobb Vanth, of course. <laughs> what line of work are you in, Cobb? <laughs> Uh, and as I said, uh, yeah, when I rewatched season two and the Book of Boba Fett leading up to Ahsoka, there was a, it was nice to see actually that they built out a lot of the line from the Mandalorian over the years. It took some time, but patience paid off. And uh, yeah, but he's a, he's a big he's the big most obvious missing one. And of course, Black Series just got his second more pajama esque outfit without the armor this year. Currently, peg warming hard at targets everywhere. Yes, but it. it uh, We'll say that it wouldn't peg worm in vintage collections because uh, I want it. So there you go. Yeah, exactly. And then four from a media source, which remains very uh, much untouched in vintage collection. The Rise of Skywalker, of course. Uh, but the four that have shown up every year are Finn uh, from Pasana. He is still holding on for dear life towards the end of the bracket. And now the Force Awakens one is being repacked instead, which well, I'll have more to say in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emperor Palpatine, Sith Eternal. Uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Villains, uh, villains. And who else could we end this with than the good boy himself, your boy, Ben Solo. His Hashtag Exegol. bring me Ben yep. Solo. <laughs> I need it. I need it. And his Exegol good boy sweater. So maybe not a ton of surprises here on this list, but it's just nice to run them down. So I think, uh, you know, I have some takeaways. I didn't tell you these in advance, but uh, no. you probably have some takeaways as well. Just the first one that I have is I'm surprised by those four uh, Rise of Skywalker figures being on it all three years. Um, where I know boo hiss, ah, Rise of Skywalker is the worst thing since my son, things like that. You know, I, <laughs> it's, I get it, whatever, but we need at least a little, just like a bone thrown every once in a while. And I, the more I think about the TFA uh, Finn getting repacked, the more I think, oh, that's not the move. Oh, that's going to yeah. tank our chances of ever seeing another sequel figure again, which I know the general priorities do not lie with the sequels. However, there is a non-zero amount of collectors that would like to at least build out that beat a little more in their collections. Yeah. I am one of them. I'm not asking for a full line around it. I'm not asking for one in every wave. I would like one maybe every year. Uh, and it, Yeah. Get it out however you, however you can, if you can borrow tooling from something else to make it cost efficient so it's not taking away from something else. I get it. It's not my biggest priority either, but come on, man. Like It is a priority. It's, it's I mean, all Star Wars, man. That's what the vintage collection yeah. is. It's for all Star Wars. It's not OT only. It's not just my favorite thing, and that's all it needs to be. Like And yeah, Rise of Skywalker is not my favorite of the Star Wars movies, but... No. Uh, it's my least these, favorite, I think. Yeah, same here. But, you yeah. know... <laughs> It still sucks that we didn't get a figure line for it, a basic figure line. Uh, yeah. So there's only, you know, the handful they released in Vintage Collection. Um, but these four, uh, you know, I look at them and we said before, like they can reuse other tooling, like Finn Pasana version can reuse a lot of the tooling from the indoor Han figure. Which Legs we all aren't... thought was kind of going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, they can reuse like, yeah, uh, the torso, the legs, the upper arms. He just needs a new uh, vest, new uh, forearms and a new head. And that's... Call it a day. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Kylo Ren and Ben, as we say, of course, they use the same legs. Yep. And then a Palpatine could probably use parts from the other Palpatine that they already have, which is, I know it's outdated and stuff, but, you know, yeah. better, better than nothing. So, yes, anyway, uh, no huge surprises. I think these are the ones that we always hear about finishing the Rogue One crew, um, some of the Clone Wars characters. But some of my takeaways that I wrote down that I have not shared with you again, not that they're anything thrilling, but... Now that they crushed the rebellion with one swift stroke, uh, the rebels, <laughs> the rebels crew anyway, there is still strong demand, as you can see, to finish crews, especially the A New Hope main characters, the Rogue One crew, and further down the list, the Bad Batch. People want to be able to, you know, have the teams all together, not just one or two or teams and themes, as you yeah, say, teams and themes complete the crew, or not whether it's just one or two or you know seventy five percent of a crew, they got to be complete. Yeah. Um. 
But uh, there continues to be demand for every era of Star Wars. And I do appreciate that Hasbro seems to be taking notice of this fact. Um, I've said it before, but I'm super glad to see that the pipeline has new and retooled and repacked figures from the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the Clone Wars, Rebels, Rogue One, and Legends, alongside a solid amount of newness from the current media, Ahsoka. Uh, and even America's Next Top Peg Warmer, Repack Finn, <laughs> while not a very good figure choice in and of itself, is nice in the fact that they haven't totally forgotten the sequel trilogy. So I'll take that small win, that small hashtag Finn win, <laughs> and hope that they can do something better uh, next time if it doesn't completely tank. Please only do one per case for the love of God. Um, yeah. It's a nice thought. It's yeah. wrong, but it's a nice yeah. thought. Yes. So, yeah. 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 And yeah, getting more, yeah, Rogue One with uh, Krennic and stuff. So it's nice to see Repacked Cassian is kind of in the same category as the Repacked Finn. I don't know why they have to do that, but uh, it's nice to have a new Krennic to go with him. And, you know, building these things out together makes sense to me. So, you know. There's something we've talked about a few times. And um, as someone who doesn't listen to this show, uh, especially while we're recording it, uh, Darth <laughs> Revan uh, yeah. being a Legends character, did he show up on all three? You no, know, he didn't show up. No, uh, he didn't show up on the first year. Let me find him real quick. But he um, he was uh, in 2021. He was ranked 92. And okay, then so he missed. Last year, he was 37. And this year, he was 42. But he he did well both times. Yeah, um, I um, think because he was announced in 2019 as a repack, and they pulled him from the line. So I again, I don't know if people just assumed that he would be coming again yeah. in in a fairly short amount of time. It's been you know it'll be five years by the time yeah, four years from the announcement by the time he actually comes out four and a half years. So um, I think the demand you know if you want something and it's not happening, keep the keep the energy going for that thing. Well, and I bring that one up in particular as well, because, you know, we've talked about it a little bit, I think on previous episodes of the show, I know I've touched on it in a live stream recently, um, talking about the EU and like, uh, legends where there's so many characters, like so yep. many lists that we get are just names that my eyes glaze over. And it's yep. like, it's from a <laughs> paragraph in a book that was published in 1993. Like, yeah. I, you know, these things are like from a source book, from a game that nobody played except for one dude. Um, yeah. But, and that's awesome. So it's like Revan was kind of like the EU poster child, like the Legends yeah. poster child. Um, so now that Revan's out of the way, I'm I'm curious, you know, what that that Legends crowd, you know, I, you've mentioned this as well, where it's like there's it's too scattered and focused. So no one thing rises to the top. And then it kind of ends up with Legends being underrepresented. You know, yeah. what are they going to rally around another character? I think folks have mentioned Dash Rendar or Kyle Katarn or maybe Mara Jade, I think was one of the names thrown out there. Like, I think they these things do better when there's more uni unity behind the messaging for that. So, yeah. And let me pull up. So in terms of leg other legends figures that are a little bit lower, but I know I know Dash, Dash Rendar, uh, I think, is the next one. OK, uh, um, Revan, but yeah. yeah so and then what 2022 dooku was the only prequel trilogy character on the bracket i think that's correct yeah so yeah it's just kind of interesting how these trends sort of go so i'm curious as we're closer to the anniversary of you know we'll be in an anniversary year uh for the prequels next year so will that kind of put some prequel stuff top of mind yeah um, it'll, yeah it'll be, i'm curious it's both the 25th anniversary of phantom menace uh com coming up next year as well as you know, if if the if you go by the twelve to eighteen month window, um, it, it's it's a good time to get them thinking about Revenge of the Sith's twentieth anniversary, mm -hmm. maybe Force Awakens' tenth anniversary. Uh, you know, that's what the Finn repack is. We yes, we're gonna get that pipeline <laughs> repack in summer twenty twenty three, and we won't get that repack until twenty twenty five. So I can't wait. I, I can wait. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so since the tournament this year, we've had another season of The Mandalorian and the first season of Ahsoka. And both do have figures coming in the pipeline. Uh, depending on how long the strikes last, we may or may not see Skeleton Crew before the end of the year. Rumors are saying probably not at the moment. Um, so are we going to have to, when we get to the top 25 submissions this year, are we going to have to beg for Balan and shout for Shin, hope for Hu Yang, uh, and ask for Moff, I don't have hashtags for all these, but Moff yeah. Gideon in his Dark Trooper <laughs> armor, Imperial Praetorian Guards, IG-12, some of these ones that you know the fans immediately are like, oh my god, that would be an awesome figure. Yeah. 
or will they keep, you know, are we going to have to beg for those or are they going to keep delivering those kinds of figures um, as in the next few months? I'm hopeful, you know, always remain hopeful. Yeah. But um, because so many of the figures have been knocked out this year, which is awesome to see so many of the heavy hitters. Um, so since there are uh, 20 that have been that have been on all three brackets, I assume they'll be back. But that leaves a lot of uh, real estate on the bracket for others. So, my, yeah, my guess is that most of these three-timers are going to be back next year as four-timers, but I hope that Hasbro can knock them up before they become five-timers. It's my dream. That's my hope. I agree with that, and I'm so happy that I just never have to type or say, vote for Velkin ever again. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, I love pre Vizsla, but yeah, I've devoted more thought to him in the past few years than I did when he was actually a character that was existing and doing things. Uh, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, just interesting to see the kind of magnitudes of priority i guess but if any of that made any sense i hope it did yeah we'll find out let us know in the comments if any of that made any sense uh well let's kind of start winding down a little bit you know it's not too early to start thinking about your top 25 so what there's six months until the next march madness however only four until the next uh round of top 25s we do those in january um so i've i know i've been thinking about mine john have you been thinking about yours uh, not as much, only to say that he, my uh, love for Hu Yang, my affiliation with the Hu Yang gang grows stronger by the week. So I think he's going to be getting a big boost. Yeah. I do kind of want to, yeah, do a rethink of some of my stuff, my priorities here. But I uh, I got a whopping two checked off of my 2023 top 25 um, Kanan in his later season looks, but I only had to buy a $500 ghost for that. <laughs> um, and then... Who was it? It wasn't Count Dooku. Uh, Grand Inquisitor from Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, those were mine. John, your list. Your lists are always wild, I'm and looking yet, it up, yeah. for some reason, I feel like your lists always have a far <laughs> greater chance. Like I, I have a sneaking suspicion that the odds of us getting a Kitster and Wald two pack is much higher than me ever getting a friggin' Ben Solo. So. Well, the thing is. Next year, uh, with the Phantom Menace love, it is possible. I'm going to yeah. be campaigning harder than ever. We know that uh, Tatooine Anakin is coming to Black Series, and Kitster and Anakin wear very similar clothing. So I hope I'll, I'll definitely buy him in Black Series, but I want him in vintage. I want him to go with the other hundreds of Phantom Menace figures that I've had for 25 years. <laughs> but in terms of my list, you know, number 25, Lumpy, the holiday special. He's not coming, but his dad is Chewbacca in his Life Day robe. So that's, I'll take that as a win. Yeah. Uh, number 22, Velkin Taziri is coming, of course. Number 21, Hu Yang. I'm in a Black Series again. Hope to God that it's coming to Vintage at some point in the future. Uh, some of these other characters. Yeah, Finn is coming. Again, it's the wrong one. Still waiting on that crosshair. God, one day, maybe. Yeah. But. Yeah, I uh, technically, I think to appease Tyler, I can't put Jedi Legend Obi-Wan on my top 25. Oh, even you though can. It's, it's my most wanted figure, but as we talked about a little bit ago on this episode, it can be done with tooling they already have. But we'll see if I want to make Tyler angry, you know? <laughs> All right, Tyler, make sure you have the Grumpy Monkey gif uh, ready to send <laughs> us while you're listening to this episode. <laughs> it should mostly be new tooling, but then I wouldn't yes. be able to put Theronet on there because I just want the same... Luke figure within some random background guy's head. Yeah. But, Which uh, they're it, kicking the dust off that tooling. That's yeah. You know, hopefully please so. God in a trooper four pack. But mm. uh, anyway, plenty of time to talk about Theronet and all these characters in a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling that things like Balin and Keller and Beck are probably going to be on my list. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, you mentioned that the Mandalorian has gotten some really good coverage over the past few years, which has been nice to see Hasbro make an honest go of building out the line and, you know, patience paying off. And then some things are kind of a struggle like Cobb. It's hard to wait for that. Um, mm. Hopefully we get him sooner rather than later. We say that about all these things, but I do hope that with the reactions to Ahsoka, the positive reception to it from the fan base and collectors and all that. I hope that it kind of sees a sort of Mandalorian sort of focus from Hasbro where, yeah. Oh, Hey, yep. We're going to go to that well a bunch. So yeah. And cause there's uh, a lot I want from it. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. And there's a lot they can already do with what they got. You know, the other HK seven HK 87 colors, um, definitely would like a new Anakin. Yep. We don't need to go down the whole thing, but there'll be plenty of lists after the show is done. But, you know, Carson Teva, I'm going to keep going, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could be here all night, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but hey, you know, we mentioned uh, OT stuff and celebrating Star Wars. 
in anniversary years. Let's not forget this year is also an anniversary year. I know it's starting to close out, but this is still the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Uh, I have actually been really bad about this over the last couple streams and podcast episodes. Um, just have not had the time to put them in there. But throughout the year, what I've been trying to do is feature some stories that we've gotten submitted from folks when we put out the call back in May for people to share their favorite memories of Return of the Jedi or their takes on it uh, just to celebrate it. So here's one from Galagus Rax Picks, who writes, uh, I was about six or seven years old when I first saw the special edition of the OT for the first time on VHS in 1998 in preparation for the release of The Phantom Menace. Uh, my parents told me that I had to watch them first before I was allowed to see episode one in cinemas. I wasn't that much into Star Wars besides having a few Power of the Force figures. Uh, I just made my first steps into a larger world, and I remember that I particularly loved Return of the Jedi with Jabba, the Ewoks, uh, the great action set pieces on Tatooine, Endor, and in space. I started drawing space for for uh, space or forest battles and really wanted Boba Fett to survive the Sarlacc, which was something I drew a lot. For a very long time, Return of the Jedi remained my favorite Star Wars film, and up to this point, it's still my personal number four, although it's probably the one I'd love to recreate scenes from on my channel the most. Great film, and this hasn't changed. 40 years old, and it's still going strong. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I like that. Now I have the image of uh, your parents, Galagus Rax picks, uh, going to, getting ready to go to episode one premiere, and then... <laughs> You, you, you let them know that you haven't seen the original trilogy and they force you to stay at home watching them, which is not a, not a bad punishment, but I just imagine no. them, you know, having it out on the town. You can't do this because you haven't seen all the other movies. You, <laughs> You're a fake you fan. Fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people nagging their eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's Star Wars fans for you. But yeah. yeah. Well, John, anything else you want to tack on here before we close out? Uh, no, at some point we'll have a post about some of this stuff and some of the uh, figures that they have made. So isn't, again, as much as we talk about the stuff we do need, it's great to see that they have, uh, you know, made a lot from the brackets as well. So yeah, very excited about that. Yeah. I, what I was setting you up for was for you to say, you're welcome. I'm just kidding. Hashtag you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not those people. Um, but you know what people we are, the ones who say while you're listening to our podcast, hey, would you mind rating and reviewing the podcast? Uh, we've put a handy dandy little link on our Instagram bio. Uh, please consider if you like us, if you like what we do, if you like the show, uh, just drop us a rating and a review. It really helps us out, helps us grow the show. And as I've said before, spread the good word of three and three quarter inch Star Wars collecting. Uh, make sure you're following us on Instagram and YouTube and threads. I guess we are at SWTVC on all of them. All right. Well, as always keep three, seven, five alive, balance the scales, Hasbro finish the 96 who Yang gang for life, Waylon for Balin, all of the hashtags and may the force be with you. We'll be right